for a lot of Manchester United fans, there's a massive dislike towards a lot of these players. The mentality that's infested the club is a big thing that we all want Eric Ten Hag to come in and hopefully fix. So to hear his first interview that he's had after the Manchester United job was announced, it starts to give real insight into what he's doing. He's questioned about whether he can manage the Ronaldos of this world. He's questioned about uh, what's in his contract, about what he's agreed to. I'm going to run through all of it with you. And I'll tell you what, it'll probably put a big smile on your face because it, it offers a lot of insight into the man behind the manager, which I think is a very important thing to take into consideration. So if you do enjoy this by the end of it, please would you consider joining the United People's TV community, going down there, hitting the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. You get a ping every time we go live with another video like this one. And look, I've just been to the barbers. Just come back. It's about as close as I'm going to get to the Eric Ten Hag style haircut. But look, let's run through this interview together and hear from United's new manager about what he's built at Ajax and what he's bringing to Manchester United. Let's run through these, these questions here. Um, and the first question here was that you still had a contract. Why are you leaving Ajax now? And he said this, he said, this is already a bonus year. Things were already happening last summer, but I wanted to be successful with Ajax one more time, spend the winter in the Champions League, because when I was appointed, I said that Ajax had to become Europe proof. That worked, but we're not done yet. We go down here. He's saying, do you sometimes get disappointed in this world? A bit of a random question. Yeah, that happened. That happens to everyone. Usually I can forgive someone, but I never forget. Woohoo! Uh, make sure you listen to that, Manchester United players. And I like this question. This is a very, very good question. Very good answer. You protect people based on your loyalty, but that is sometimes at the expense of yourself. I definitely protect people outwardly. Internally, it can be different. If someone had crossed the border, ultimately it's their top sport. You have to be able to trust each other. Otherwise, you can't get results. If my protective attitude comes at the expense of myself, so be it. I am the manager, the leader. I do that in the interest of the result and of Ajax. I am subordinate to that. I mean, it has to be music to the ears of United fans. Just the language there. Let me try and pull that up on screen here. Just the, the, the language there. I'm subordinate to Ajax. It, it's, he's doing everything in Ajax's interest. He needs to get trust between his players. And we've lost that trust. We've lost that as United fans. We've lost that trust in this squad, haven't we? Uh, we, we would have seen it. We would have seen a performance against uh, Le Leicester, or we would have seen a performance against uh, Everton, or we would have seen a performance in both games against Liverpool or City. There's just been so many games and so many times this season where United fans we've just lost trust with this squad. And if Ten Hag is going to have success, he's going to have to have that trust from the players to be able to know that they're going to do what he's asked them to do, what he's training them to do. If he doesn't have that. As he says there, it won't work. But just his language, it's a very interesting, maybe it's just a Google Translate making it a bit more extreme, but the idea, he's protective of the players when he needs to be, but behind closed doors, maybe it's very different. Because uh, people talk, you know, if you're looking at outwardly, I, mean, I spoke about this in a couple of live streams, the outwardly char charismatic managers of the world, Jurgen Klopp's, your Pep Guardiola's, very um, active on, this, on the such lines. And Ten Hag might not be like that, but there's different sorts of charisma. And Ten Hag's charisma strikes me as somebody who's intelligent, knowledgeable, can and carries a lot of respect. Similar to Ralph Rannick in that sense, I suppose. Let's go down and read what else, further into the interview. As I said, it's a very, very good interview. Uh, you also protected Promo, so that was to do with the case that's gone going. We don't need to read about that. And Mark Overmars, uh, he, he spoke about this, but this I thought was quite interesting. He goes, it almost sounds like a social worker. He goes, so are trainers. My profession is training, coaching, making analysis, but above it all, guarding people. The task has become much more intensive in the last 20 years. In the last century, the world was still relatively uncluttered. The internet has changed it a lot. People's problems are becoming more and more complex as society becomes more complex. You also see that in football players. If you want to get the most out of people, you have to take an interest in them. Ajax is a very mixed club, a true reflection of society with many cultures together, and you have to delve into that. Again, that's well, it's completely accurate. Modern footballers now are not what they once were. So Ronaldo coming back into this club and looking at it from where, from the club he left, he was like, what's going on? This is weird. Why, isn't it, why are people not like putting everything into training? Why are people not staying late? Why is it only me doing it? Maybe, maybe it wasn't only him doing it, but society has changed. I've told you that. I mean, I've, I haven't told you that. Jeez, you can see it yourself. And that's the concept of entitled footballers and entitled football fans that I tell you about. A lot of football fans want success now. And if, and if success doesn't come right now, then it's failure. 
sack everybody, start again. A lot of footballers think they've made it when they've come to Manchester United. When in reality, that's the first step on a different ladder, which can take you somewhere else if you want it to. But if you just settle, which a lot of United players have, settle for the paycheck, get comfy, put the slippers on. That's a mentality. But I think he's going to really struggle to, not struggle to get rid of, but he's going to have to fight to get rid of. But it's just hearing that, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a very articulate response to that question, I think. And it is. It, it, and, it, and it's a bit of an insight into what he is as a coach. My profession is training, coaching, also guiding people. I've said this quite a lot when I, was, when I went in-depth in my philosophy video. The human side of the, of the management is something that's really quite important to Eric Ten Hag. And really trying to understand. And that's why it's so important that we sign the right players, right? Because if he's talking about that, it's about getting the, the right mentality throughout the squad. It will make his job far easier if everybody's on the same wavelength. Right now, like Radnick has tried and tried and tried with this squad. It's just not been capable of doing it because everybody's settled, matured, experienced. They don't want to learn anything new. I think, it's going to, he's good. I think he will struggle, but I think he'll do it. But it's a very interesting response, that one. That seems like a big task with all those ego, egos. Sorry. This is the biggest challenge for every trainer coach at the moment. Those egos are crea also created by society, aren't they? And they are also necessary to survive in such a world. But I have to make sure they keep working together. And he will do that. Yeah, as I said, doesn't put a big smile on my face, but a bit like Ralph Radnick. And I, I, me listening to him and I was like, yeah. Okay, like that's, that's I suppose what I what I'm doing here with Eric Ten Hag is that he knows about the modern day footballer and how that's different from that footballer from 10, 20 years ago because it is different. They are different, and they need to be managed different. And maybe that's one thing that all of our current manage all our managers post Fergie just haven't been able to do. Um, sometimes this is a, the interviewer saying sometimes it seems like I listen to Lou Van Gaal with the team interest and a total principle Lou is an example for me and talks about Johan Cruyff as well of course uh, talking about breaking their records uh, we don't need to know about that it's just him uh, asking about the background uh, da -da -da. Da -da -da. there's another there's a really there's a really important part down here the most important part of this conversation is down here what's the most important thing that you learned at Ajax he said, being able to manage all the input, you don't learn that at Go Ahead Eagles or FC Utrecht where everything is much smaller. At Ajax, there are constantly many more incentives and information flows. You have to channel it. Time management is very important here. Where do you put your priorities? Ultimately, it's about getting your team to function better. The rest is trivial. And that's, that's what he needs to do. Ten, this squad, right? And while there's so many of the majority of them I don't particularly like, a good coach makes them far better. We all genuinely, and I still kind of scratch my head thinking about it. I thought we were one central midfielder away from competing for the Premier League. And then look what's happened now. But that same squad exists. That same squad, which largely went an entire season undefeated away from home under Solskjaer. There's real, there is real talent in this squad. And a good coach that can manage it properly will get so much more out of it. So, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. I'm just pretty confident that he will be able to manage it and coach it better than anybody has at United since Fergie. That's what I think anyway. And here where the questions come back linked to United, really. He goes, can you deal well with the Ronaldos of this world? I think so. But I will remain myself in that too. I will not change my view on coaching. The material always determines how you play, but I indicate the requirements that come with it and the standards. I tell who I tell who has what task and who does not meet it. It will be told that regardless of who he is. I make no concessions in that regard. And that has to be the best music to the ears of all United fans. He's confident that, and I think, I think he can as well. He's confident he can manage players like Ronaldo, players like Varane, players like Bruno Fernandes, your top elite level players. And he's saying there, it doesn't matter who they are. I'm not changing my vision and philosophy. Anybody who doesn't want to work with Ten Hag, it won't be like Ragnick where the 4 2 system didn't work. He goes, okay, I'll see what I can do. Concessions. There won't be concessions from Ten Hag. The only concession will be the player leaving the club. You're either on board with Ten Hag and what he's doing or you're just kicked out. That's what he's saying there. Regardless of who it is, I make no concessions. Now that 
puts a big smile on my face. I'll tell you that. Uh, at Ajax, you had a heavy voice in transfers. Is that a requirement at your new club? He goes, yes. I set requirements in advance about how I want to work. If they weren't granted, I wouldn't join. That's what he's saying. I'm ultimately responsible and accounted for the results. I don't want to be the sole ruler. I stand for cooperation, but control in transfers is a condition for me. Those two things there, that's, that should be the foundations of why you're excited about Eric Ten Hag becoming Manchester United's manager. He's somebody who's very, very driven, proven at Ajax. We don't know what he's going to do post Ajax. We'll find that out at Manchester United. But he's driven, and anybody who doesn't want to toe in line, he won't bend to. He won't concede to. No matter if they're on 400 grand a week or 40,000 pounds a week, the same thing applies. And there, the fact that he's, the fact that he made these demands, and as far as I know, he got them down in his contract before he came and joined the club. That's big, because uh, Jose Mourinho was undermined. Louis van Gaal got stabbed in the back. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer just kind of failed towards the end. Um, but managers at United, the board and the club has kind of worked against them at times. And for it to work properly, we all know that structure needs to be in place. Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout, they're going to be replaced. A new deputy director, as far as I know, is going to come work with John Murto. Fingers crossed to Paul Mitchell. Um, and Ralph Rannick is going to go in a consultancy role. We, we're starting to get a football side of the business, if you want to call it that. Behind the scenes at United, support network is going to be there. And just hearing Ten Hag saying about that he won't concede to any player that he has to have the right say on the recruitment. The sort of things that you really want to hear as a United fan. And for me, the sort of things that made me so excited about him coming in and why I still am so excited. Let's see what else is said in the interview. Uh, beside the prizes, one, what is your legacy at Ajax? We had great years. I think that Ajax has played its Ajax under my leadership, always with the intention to play good and beautiful football with adventure and beauty. That led to a lot of goals. There's even more of a winning mentality, a winning culture that has come into the club. Perhaps that is where my greatest influence lies. In the Netherlands, there is often little attention for this. It's always about the tactics with trainers, but mentality is just as important a factor. Or Ajax who fail when I came, if you say so, and I think that too. So he's saying there, he's like, yeah, you can talk about, you can talk about the fact that Ajax have won two domestic doubles under me. You can talk about the fact that we got to the Champions League semi-final. But what he's saying there is that the thing that I consider the most successful is that when I leave this club, when I leave Ajax, I think I would leave the club with a better winning mentality than before I took over. Those three things there, man, we're missing the mentality. We're, miss we're missing somebody who can drive um, discipline into these players, real discipline. Somebody who can control recruitment smartly. Yes, yes, yes. Tick, tick, tick. It's a cracking interview. It really is a cracking interview. Um, go down here and read that. Now there is a lot of pressure to get a title. I'm, not, I'm aware of that. You just have to win. And then these last couple of questions here, there's just about Ajax. It's kind of not really linked to Manchester United, but it's those three points there, right? The fact that he feels he can, he feels he can manage the Ronaldos of this world and anybody who doesn't toe in line, he won't listen. To, he he won't bend his his ways. If you if you know what I mean, he won't change his ways. It's either you come on with Ten Hag, or you're off. Simple as that. He's had a heavy voice in transfers. He's controlling that, and the fact that he there he 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 feels that his biggest success at Ajax is that winning mentality that he's leaving behind. Sorry, but he, it's all the all the hallmarks of an elite level manager, man. The way he speaks. That bit there, the, the winning mentality, that's the bit that got me there towards the end. But that's his first interview since the announcement's been made of him becoming Manchester United's new manager. What's your take away from that? If you look, if you want to, if, you, if you, uh, we've got any Dutch uh, followers or anybody, I'll leave the link to this interview in the description. But I found that to be quite a fascinating interview, which is exactly why I did a video on it. Obviously, I've done a video like earlier today on transfers, and I, I typically wouldn't do two videos like this in one day. But... Given that it's Ten Hag's first interview and the first comments that he's made, I thought it was very important I brought that to you straight away. So please drop a like on the video. Let me know what you think about them. Man, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited about what comes next. Who knows? We might win it all. We might not. But I think we will. <laughs>